the fact that we're sleeping with each other, despite the fact that we're dating, at the end of the day, we still don't have any obligation to each other. Like, we're still not in a committed, exclusive relationship. I'm still living at my place, paying my bills. You are still living at your place, you know, uh, maintaining your own life and your lifestyle. So only in the event that life happens should you be asking for money. But I don't think because you are, um, you know, giving me access to your body. I don't think that as a woman that grants you the right to ask me for money now or ask me to pay a bill of yours or just pay your bills. What do you have to say to that? Um, I completely understand where you're coming from. And this is why I advise young women, because I am older. Um, stop sleeping with men. If you're dating somebody, you don't. You're going to stand up and say, "Well, we were just dating." FL, I was never FL, 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 repeat, repeat what you just said. Repeat what you just said. You were cutting out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's all right. Sorry. Um, that's why I advise young women to not engage in sexual behavior with men that they are dating, unless that person has committed to you and there is talks of moving forward, maybe even discussing marriage, you're putting yourself at risk. And actually, you're putting both of you at risk because now you are risking a pregnancy with a woman that you don't even want to support if something were to happen. You know what I mean? Um, this this would, if we weren't, if we would not try to take what we can take out of committed relationships and pick and choose the benefits and use them, but then pretend like it doesn't come with its own risk, we wouldn't be even having these conversations. Um, I And this is what men used to do. This is what men used to do. They could not have access to that woman until they married them. Does that mean those men were abstaining from sex? No, they went to the women who were willing to do that. But when it comes to dating, that should even be on the table because like I said, there are risks on both ends, unnecessary risks. So I just want to make sure that I'm hearing you correctly. So are you basically saying that um, women should um, practice celibacy until marriage? Um, I didn't say uh, they should. I'm saying if you if you feel like there is a risk of you, depending on who the person is, um, where you may be making a lifelong commitment through childbearing for someone that you are unsure of, then it is not worth the moment of pleasure. That's what I am saying. I'm not being unrealistic because I've been there. I'm, I'm, I don't know how young a lot of the people in the comments are, but I've been there, done that, okay? Um, the best thing you could do for yourself is assess the risks. And there are plenty of both men and women who are abstinent because of this, because they realize it's really not that deep. Unless I can honestly say that if she calls me up and says she's pregnant and I'm good and I'm not going to stress out, then I'm not going to go there and vice versa. I agree with you. So, so, I, so, so basically you're saying um, practice, you, you, you don't believe people should be sleeping with each other while they're dating, but being in a committed exclusive relationship, that's different, correct? Yeah. That's Got you. different. Got you. That's different. Got you. Yeah. Okay. I understand. And you know what? I can, I can, um, I can agree to that to an extent. Um, you know, I was literally having a conversation with my cousin earlier and, um, you know, she's, she's, she's a grown woman. She has a, a child, she's a divorcee. Um, and her and I were talking and I was telling her, there are these women out here that are having three, four five kids by three, four five different men. But there's also right. women out here that are, you know, being sexually liberated and not only not having children, but not getting pregnant. So I'm like, obviously these women and, it, you know, it's the same thing for men too. These women and men are obviously doing things that, you know, these other people are not doing. It could just be um, as simple as practicing safe sex. Like, you know, because I, like I said, I agree mm -hmm. with what you said, but in reality, people are still going to be sleeping with each other while they're dating and people are still going to be going to the bars and the clubs and the lounges on the weekend and meeting somebody at 10 PM 
and sleeping with each other at 2.30 a.m., right? And yeah, there will always be those people. I don't think that we are all supposed to do the exact same thing. I mean, there, there's diversity for that reason. What I'm saying is the people who are up in arms and concerned, meaning all I hear is men complaining about child support and women having baby daddies. I So I can't control men, but what I can do is advise women because that's the group that I'm in. And I tell them, not only will men uh, not a lot of them will tell you they're not going to take you seriously. They judge you because of body count. They judge you if you have kids. Then you need to be a lot more selective with who you do these things with. You cannot be out here just doing whatever. It's not because I am sexually repressed or I'm into purity culture. It's because the very people that you want to engage in will shame you for the very behavior that they want you to engage with them. It's so backwards. You want You want to be able to have access to her body, but you will shame her for it. That, that that doesn't make sense to me. So it's best that you That's guys decide. It's best that you guys decide to just engage with the woman that you say is easy and leave and don't don't lie and manipulate the ones that you claim are wifey material. Don't pressure her into sex. And then if you're not serious about her, you can move on without creating yet another trail of disappointment. Just deal with the women or pay for it. I mean, that's why prostitution exists. The problem is that we're manipulating people and pretending that you want a real relationship just to get access to them when there are women who are willing. No, that's 100% fact. I agree with you, FL. That's 100% that's fact. Um. But I know, like, again, like, same thing with Chantel, like, you know, you, you just talked about, like, you know, the men manipulating um, the woman and things of that nature. Like, are, are women manipulating men as well? Absolutely. I think there's toxic people on, on both ends. But I'll say as a movement, and I'm not saying this because I'm women, it's just the society we live in. A lot of what you see from women is a reaction, a reaction to what was done, because at, if you look back, a lot of the men that always want to romanticize how things were done in the 50s, 60s, you know, my grandmother. OK, so what has led this to where we are now? Why are the women pushing back? Because it's, it, it, it is, in fact, a pushback. They've seen that when their grandmothers or their mothers were doing the things based on what men say that they want, they were used and abused. So what you're seeing now with women taking the reins and learning from what was done to them and inflicting it on men that is a reaction that's not right but <laughs> you bully you're gonna get bullied back you know what they're I mean? they're 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 agreeing the the women are agreeing with you in the comments i mean i i'm i'm fair you know what i mean i'm fair i, I like i said i know that there are men who are manipulated as well but at the same time if men were holding each other to a higher standard and checking each other about not using, manipulating and abusing women, then you would not see women going out of their way to get revenge as much as you do now. Cause it's just not, it, it wasn't the issue before and it's because it's become an issue now because women have decided not to be on the other end of it anymore. You know, it eventually will balance itself out but when you have a situation that boils over, at first it's going to look like the pendulum has swung to the extreme. And once it does that, you'll find men actually working on themselves, healing, and we can actually start making our way back to an equilibrium. That's what's happening. But FL, <laughs> this is my thing, though. It doesn't I make hear, it <laughs> I Sorry. Hear, I hear and acknowledge everything that you're saying, but... Mm -hmm. Um, and I was telling my cousin this earlier. Um, I think, I think a lot of the, the reason that, you know, um, 70% of our children are being born out of wedlock. Why, why all these children, why it's so like, you know, why majority of these children are being brought up in single parent homes. Mm -hmm. I think it's largely more so, a um, a sexual irresponsibility thing. On not just behalf of the woman, but the men as well. I think that's what's um, really going on. Like I'm not, I'm not denying the fact that 
there are women that are being manipulated and abused. And I'm not de denying the fact that there are men that are being, um, you know, manipulated and abused. But, you know, um, for, you know, Pookie and Ray Ray to be out here having eight kids by six different women and, you know, Carisha to be out here having eight kids by six different men. Like, I don't, I don't think that's like, I don't think that's largely due to um, abuse and being manipulated. 